Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name's Leora Eileen and I talk on air about books, reading, writing and sometimes other stuff as well. And today I'm going to be talking about my favourite books of 2023. I always love filming these videos and I also love watching them back. It's just so fun to see your whole reading year and everything you loved the most. In this video, I briefly want to discuss some statistics of like the things I've read. Then I'm going to talk about my favorite books. I've made a great selection with different genres. It differs a little bit from my outcome for the mid-year book freak out tag where I also talk about my favorite books, but like up until the middle of the year. I think mostly also because when it comes to this video, I want to have like a diversity of genres as well. And then I also just read a lot of great things that I hadn't read when I filmed that video. And then after my absolute favourites, I have an honourable mentions list. I did this in my last few videos where I discussed my favourite reads of the year as well, just because there's like always a few books that I loved a lot and that are kind of a favourite but like just didn't make it to the list. So they get to be on the honourable mentions list and it's honourable. <laughs> But before we get into all of that, I want to talk about another thing that I've really enjoyed this year, and that is buddy reading. And specifically, I want to thank this week's sponsor, which is Fable. Fable is a community powered app for finding, reading and discussing books with other people. As you all know, I love annotating books together with my friends and Fable makes that really easy through their book clubs. You can create a bigger book club with multiple people, but you can also make a private book club with just two people and buddy read that way. So this sponsor segment is a little bit different because it's also a collaboration with my wonderful friend Leonie, who runs her channel over on the book Leo. We've been friends for many years. I love her so much much her content is also absolutely amazing and we've been buddy reading a book together through fable and the book we've been reading is a dowry of blood so how do these book clubs work on fable it's really easy you pick a book and then you set suggested milestones for the club and when you do that fable automatically creates chapter rooms and in these rooms you can discuss the book and this keeps the entire conversation spoiler free you can read at your own pace or follow the milestones and at the end there's space for a review so if you buy the book on fable which you don't have to but I do recommend because it comes with these really fun perks. You can see each other's reactions, highlights, emoji reactions pop up a real time in the book as you're reading. And this discussion also pops up in the chapter rooms. But if you have a private reading club, you can just do it with the two of you. And in addition to all these social features that Fables Reader has, you can also just make private annotations and tabs for yourself if you want to. Next to all of this, Fable has many other very cool features. They have list building tools, an awesome for you feed, which is just like a an endless stream of book content from readers like you and I and my favorite thing that they have on Fable is book tinder where you get to swipe book recommendations and it's literally so addicting and I've taught everybody I know about it because I think it's so fun and I've also gotten like quite a few interesting book recommendations out of it so download the free Fable app today using the link in my description and then you go to the clubs tab and you use the little blue icon to create your own buddy read for each friend that joins you'll both get five dollars in Fable ebook credit and that way if you invite enough friends you can get your ebook for free which is a really fun way to build a bigger community and also get some books. I'm really excited about this so don't forget to check out the Fable app and of course my wonderful friend Leonie. Thank you so much to Fable for sponsoring this video. So before we go into the actual favourite books, I want to take a little bit of a look at some of my statistics. I just briefly want to go over them. So I'm filming this on December 20th and as of right now I've read 71 books which is really not a lot compared to other years, but I kind of feel okay about it because I just didn't want to push myself too much this year and I succeeded, so <laughs> I'm pleased. And then I've read 18,908 pages. I think it's definitely gonna bump up to 19,000 because I'm reading a book right now that I'm pretty sure I'll finish and then, you know, it will bump up at least 100 pages. But still, that's a lot of pages. Although it's not as many pages as, as I've read before. Like, I remember I read, like, around 30,000 in 2020, so... But you know, we didn't have a lot to do in 2020, so that was different. The shortest book I've read this year is The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. I mean, it's 54 pages. It's extremely short. It's a play by Oscar Wilde. I listened to the audiobook, which I highly recommend doing for plays because that was a really nice experience. And then the longest book I read this year is Between with 989 pages. I mean, I kind of saw that coming. This book was huge, absolutely massive. My average book length in 2023 was 266 pages, which I think is not a lot. I always expect it to be more around the 300 page mark, but it never is, so I don't know. And then the most shelved book that I read this year was Name of the Wind, which has been shelved by, I think like 
over 1.8 million other people, so that's a lot of people. And then the least shelved book I've read is Darbe and Drankje Voor by Emmy van Rijver, which was shelved by 61 people. This is a Dutch fantasy book. It's like on a smaller market already, but then it was also self-published. It was really fun though. It's like a sort of cozy, witchy fantasy. My average rating this year was a 3.6 stars, so I haven't given out too many five-star reviews, I guess. The highest rated book I've read this year was Heartstopper Volume 5 by Alice Oseman, which I, once again, also adored. I will be a Heartstopper girly forever. I just... The representation in this book and the good it's done for me and my confused queer teen heart is just making me very happy. And then my first review that I wrote this year was for The Moth Keeper, which I'll talk about later in this video because it is in fact a favourite. So those were a few of my statistics that I wanted to mention. Now let's get into the book lists. Let's start at the top. My favourite book of this year has become Out of Love by Hazel Hayes. I did not see this coming. So I read this book because one of my best friends uh, had it in her bookshelf at home and I just spent a lot of time at her house and so I was at her house and I did not bring a book. I know, oh my god, who is she? She didn't bring a book. And I wanted to spend some time reading so I asked her like, can I borrow a book? And this is the book that she recommended to me. She was like, I think personally you would like it very much, especially where you are right now in your life. And she just handed it to me. Let me say, I destroyed this book and this book destroyed me because I destroyed that copy of Out of Love. I've given it back to Nina by now, but I had to buy her a new one because I dropped it like in the bath. I think it got rained on. I don't know. I did. I abused the book. I'm so sorry. <laughs> she still loves me though. So that's very nice. <laughs> but this book also destroyed me. It was a mutual destruction. It was just so sad and heart-wrenching. And I usually do not like sad books, but this one really got to me and I just loved it so much. So the story of this book is very unique because it's sort of a love story, but it's also sort of not. We follow a romance from end to beginning. So we start at the breakup and all the heart-wrenching feelings that come into play. And then we move all the way back throughout the book to the first kiss. Such an interesting concept, so well done, heart-wrenching, so heartfelt, very sad very humoristically written and like very sharp and with the spirit of 2023 I don't know when this book came out but it was very now and it felt very relatable to me as somebody who's single and dating but also just like the female friendships the way they were described the mental health struggles and the way they were shown in this book and the way it was all handled I just think it was beautifully done truly a masterpiece the prose was amazing it was just so beautiful and I'm just I don't know what to do with myself now I have to say if you love Dolly Elderton and you have like the same tastes as I do I think you would love this so please 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 go read it it was so good then next up on the list is things I do not want to know by Deborah Levy I've talked so much about Miss Deborah Levy and I still don't know whether to say Levy or Levi but <laughs> we're just rolling with it I read the entire living autobiography series this year um this is the second book and things I don't want to know is the first book and then the third book is real estate I don't have the first book right now because I've loaned it out to a friend but oh my god so good Deborah Levy is so sharp and she's so witty I just love the way these books are sort of part autobiography but then they're also sort of autofiction at the same time they talk about nothing but then they cover all these important social things and they talk about her life and her life is just so interesting and then at the same time it's also sort of a conversation between her and famous writers and it's just it's so well done if you're an artist or a writer or a feminist or you just love reading essay collections I highly recommend these they are so good especially in the first book it deals with some more heavy subjects because Deborah Levy grew up in apartheid Africa and her dad was a political prisoner but it's all handled very well and the way she uses language as a lens to look at the world and it's just ah oh, it's so good <laughs> I adored these next up on the list is the first fantasy book that I read this year I think or I don't know but it was early on in the year when I read this also destroyed this <laughs> I'm sorry you should never lend me any books <laughs> don't trust me so as shown by the tabs on this book as well this was very well loved by me a book I've been wanting to read for such a long time that when I finally got to it it was sort of like a bit of a shock to the system it was like am I reading this yes we are reading it we follow a young man that tells his life story of like the adventurous life he has lived so once again, a sort of autobiography, but in a fantasy setting. This is set for the biggest part at a magical university. And I'm just, give me a magical school and I'll love your book. I'm a simple girl. Next to all of that, the world is 
so big and it feels like so true and whimsical and amazing and this book kind of felt like coming home and it was just so cozy but like very fantastical and big adventures and like fights and dragons and so good if you love high fantasy i highly recommend it music is also a big theme in this book and i think patrick rothfuss is just a brilliant writer and oh my god i wish he would just write the third book because i don't have the confidence to start the second one because i like i do not trust this man is he gonna write the third book? We do not know. Then next up on my list of favorites is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. You guys, this was so incredibly book, incredibly book. <laughs> this was so incredibly book. The most book out of all my books. <laughs> You guys, this was so incredibly good. I was blown away by this book and I connected with it on such a deep level and I just didn't see it coming and I just thought it was so good. And I highly recommend that you all read it. Like, if you want to take away anything from this list, this was so good. So it's a very emotional family story on the one hand, but on the other hand, I would say it's definitely an exploration of gender and identity and what it means to be one or the other and to be put in a category by society. We follow two twin sisters and they are both mixed race. And one of them sort of starts to live a white life and she passes for white and the other one stays in the black suburb that they grew up in and has a daughter with a black man and just sort of stays in that part of the community. And they, they were always very different, but now they've really drifted apart. They've like sort of separated in the sense of their racial identities. And we follow their timeline and their story as they run away from home and make their lives and then make their life separate from each other. And then we follow the stories of their children, their daughters, as their storylines sort of cross back into each other again. And it's set in the 1950s to the 1990s. It spans multiple generations. And it was just so incredibly well done. I am not sure I even have the words to describe this book. I so many of the scenes, especially concerning one of the characters who's trans, were so heartfelt and just hit home with me and were so beautifully written and there's something very sincere and authentic about this book and I'm not sure what it is, but it's just, it's a pearl of a book. It's so well done. And what I love about this book as well is that as a reader, you have so many sort of questions and new ideas and like, you really start to think about society and the way we divide the world and then it also touches upon art and theatre and just so many things I love and it's just so well done. If you like a book that criticises society and you like a book that still also holds love for art and theatre and all these things and that intertwines different family timelines beautifully then I highly recommend this. Definitely make sure you have some free time though because you're gonna stay up reading this because that's what I did. <laughs> And next up on my list is a book I'm so excited to talk about and that is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. I am not sure where my physical copy is. I tried like, I tried looking and I thought it was going to be right over there, but it's not and I don't know where I've put it. <laughs> I read this on vacation this year and it was just really, really, really good. We follow this writer and she is basically a ghostwriter for a very famous romance novelist, but she's kind of lost her faith in romance and so she's really struggling writing the next book. And her ex-boyfriend, by the way, is the biggest prick I've ever read about in the history of pricks in books. The worst man. Like, oh my god. He stole so much of her, like, in terms of her identity and creativity and, like, value as a writer. And I'm just, I'm still angry about this. I know it's a fictional man, but I'm so angry. And she meets her new editor and the editor doesn't know that she's the ghostwriter. He thinks that she's the assistant. And, you know, they, they don't get along. He's very strict and very different from her. And she's like this loosey-goosey chaos creative girl. And then something really awful happens within her family and she has to go home. And she hasn't been home in forever. Her family has a funeral home and she and her dad are the only ones in the family that can see ghosts so there's like this sort of special little twinge of fantasy to this and so she and her dad have a really special bond but then when she shows up home to deal with this recent tragedy this editor's on her doorstep and he's a ghost and from there on a beautiful love story starts this book deals with grief majorly so be aware of that going in one of the biggest themes is grief and grieving but it was so beautiful and it was so well done and every single element had its function and its place in the book and it was like coming home and it was beautiful and I just I laughed out loud I cried I there were some lines in this about sort of the people closest to you 
loving you most when you're just existing and you don't even have to try and you know if somebody's seen the ugliest part of you and they still love you and it, you know that sort of theme and it was it was beautiful <laughs> it made me feel so seen and I just I love books like these especially if there's ghosts involved I love the way the romance panned out I was kind of confused I was like is she gonna fall in love with the ghost what's gonna go on but it was handled so well and it was done beautifully and I loved it so highly recommend and I wish I could find the book because what if I lost it <laughs> I probably gave it to somebody next up on my favorites list is a graphic novel uh this is the moth keeper by Kay O'Neill I love the tea dragon society one of my favorite graphic novel series also by Kay O'Neill so when I saw this at the bookstore I immediately needed to get my hands on it this story is so beautiful and it deals with so many themes of friendship mental health community helping each other within community and it was just it was mesmerizing and so whimsical and magical the graphic novel is just beautiful like the art style i love it i love everything k o'neill does like look at this stunning imagery oh it's just so cute i highly recommend listening to like a beautiful asmr room with magical music whilst reading this because that's what i did and it was an 11 out of 10 experience it was so good so it's this community that sort of lives underground in the desert and we follow Anya and she's set out to be the next moth keeper. The moth keeper takes care of the moths. It's sort of like a herd and they take the herd of moths outside and then they make sure that the moths go to the moonflower and the moonflower sort of powers their entire society, their entire village that's sort of built like in the rocks slightly underground in the desert and it's beautiful they have these like tiny houses within the rocks and like smoke coming out of the chimneys and basically an elder is teaching her about the moths but Anya's really dealing with loneliness and going out there on her own and daring to ask for help and themes like that and it's just ah, oh, it's so magical but touches upon so many things that we deal with within our real world and it's just Kay O'Neill has done it again. So good. Highly recommend. And then last but not least on my list of favourites for this year is In the Company of Witches by Aurelie Wallace, which I've talked about at length on the channel also. But I felt like it still needed to be on the favourites list, mostly because it kind of rang the starting sign for lots and lots and lots of cosy witch reading this year. And I mean, it's not like I didn't read any cosy witch books in previous years, but I really went... I went off this year and I read so many cozy witch novels. I had the best time. But this was one of my favorites. It's set in a sleepy New England town and we follow the Warren witches, which is like this powerful witchy family. Our main character is Bryn and she's dealing with the recent loss of her husband. And then there's these two of sort of like kooky, eclectic aunties that she lives with and they run a B&B. &B. And then somebody gets murdered at the B&B &B and Bryn's aunt gets framed and Bryn has to solve the crime. She has to figure out who actually did it because she doesn't want her witchy auntie to be framed. This story is so humoristic. It's so fun. It's absolutely silly. Like, don't expect a genius something, but it was just so fun. And, you know, sometimes you just want to have fun, especially witchy fun. So I adored this and I highly recommend. And look at that cover. Is that not the cutest thing you've ever seen? So if you love Gilmore Girls and Practical Magic and like cozy stories, you need to read this ASAP. <laughs> now it's time for the honorable mentions. I'm really excited about these. I'll be going through them a little bit quicker though, because like I don't want to go into it too deeply because these are just the honorable mentions of books that I did love, but just didn't make the favorites list. So first up, we have another cozy fantasy novel and that is Between by L.L. Starling. I've been obsessed with this book. I love it. I made an entire reading vlog about it as well. It's about a girl who goes to this sleepy town and there's a portal to another world in this town. And there's also witches. There's all sorts of magical creatures. And she has never dreamed in her life. But when she goes to this town, she starts dreaming again. And it's absolutely wild as to why she's dreaming. And then there's also this sexy wizard in her dreams with leather pants. <laughs> There's so much stuff going on in this book. It's mostly just hilarious. It's so funny and witty, but at the same time, the story, I just, oh, I loved it. Adored it. There are like a few weird things about it though. Mostly that I felt like one of the characters was being overly sexualized. And then also everybody's drunk all the time and I'm not sure why. So that's like my little criticism of this book. And that's just why I couldn't love it fully and why it's not on the favorites list but otherwise it would have been and I still think it's such a fun read that you should pick up. I have a non-fiction book that made it to the honorable mentions list and it's like such a weird weirdly specific read but it's so typical for me especially and that is Cursed Objects by J.W. Ocker. Listen 
I love a book about something deeply eerie and unsettling and this was exactly that. In this book J.W. Ocker talks about all sorts of different cursed objects from like chairs up until lockets and houses and all sorts of different things and I just loved hearing all the lore and folklore and stories and myths around all these objects and I thought it was so interesting and books like these always really inspire me. They always make me go like, oh my god, you could make a fantasy plot out of this. So I really loved that. Another honourable mention that we could not forget this year is Every Harder Doorway by Shauna McGuire. This series has been on my TBR for the longest time so I'm very delighted that I picked it up this year and that I adored it. This is basically a huge series of novellas and there's so many of them. I've started listening to them as audiobooks and I'm on book two now. And we follow all these children that have used portals to different worlds but they've come back and they're back in our world now and they need to deal with our world things but they can't because they've been in magical worlds. <laughs> so they all get put together at this boarding school and that is where our story is set. This series is absolutely gruesome. I think it borders on sort of like horror fan to see and I feel like that's not mentioned enough because this was very scary and had like a lot of adult content that I was not prepared for. Absolutely gruesome but if you love like Neil Gaiman and sort of like Tim Burton movies like that kind of eerie and settling stuff then I highly recommend these. Okay this book is on the honorable mentions list but it's only so because it's in Dutch and I feel it's kind of silly to put like a Dutch book on my favorites list because none of you <laughs> will be able to read it unless you're Dutch but I really have to mention it because actually it should be a favourite. It was so good and I'm obsessed with it and I kind of want to reread it and I'm so excited for the sequel to come out. And it is going to be translated as well, which I'm so excited for. I'm not sure when the translation is out, but I believe the translation will be called In the Heart of Wicked Creatures and the Dutch uh, edition is called In its Vervloekte Heart by Rima Ori, one of my favourite Dutch fantasy novelists. I had the pleasure of meeting Rima a few times and I think she's absolutely wonderful and I'm so happy for all the good things that are happening for her and I'm so excited. So this book is set in a magical academy in a war-torn land. It has enemies to lovers. I think you could really compare it to a lot of Air of Kwong work and then also sort of like the Hunger Games it has a lot of those vibes and it deals heavy with themes of colonialism and racism but it's all done so well. This edition is also stunning by the way but just look at that art this is the magical academy that they go to our main character is a blood child and has special powers and it's absolutely terrifying i'm kind of scared of her the way they infuse sort of the dutch history of colonialism into this it's just so well done and it really makes you think about a lot of things while still being a very entertaining fantasy story and it's just oh my god standing ovation so well done so there's about 10 more books I wish I could mention but I kind of want to really select my absolute favorites for this year and just keep it at that and then these few honorable mentions so this is going to be my list for now but just please know that there's so many other books that I've absolutely loved this year I just am not able to talk about all of them because it's too many books but I really hope you've enjoyed watching my content this year and you're very excited to go into the new year where I'll be making lots more videos on here and other stuff and art for my web shop. I'm definitely excited and I'm so pleased you're here and you've been here with me. I really hope you had a wonderful reading year and a wonderful year as well. Let me know if you had to choose one book, what would be your absolute favorite book of 2023? I can't wait to hear. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Fable. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next year. Bye!